Welcome again to our Bible study here at uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Happy Advent. We continue uh, to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Savior as now we are already looking at uh, the fourth Sunday in Advent. Uh, so when you think about your Advent wreath at church, uh, four candles are being lit and it's just that much closer to Christmas Eve, Christmas Day in which we gather together to celebrate Jesus' birth. But until we get to that day, we still are in our uh, time of preparation, our time of learning and growing, uh, so that we can receive Jesus uh, again as our Savior and King and look forward uh, to his return, that we can know his great love for us uh, in coming into this world. So as we continue our study today, we have our... Our prayer, we're going to use again the Advent General Prayer from Portals of Prayer. O oh Lord, the season of Advent provides us with a special opportunity to prepare for the celebration of Christ's coming at Christmas. May our preparations bring glory and honor to you, and may our focus be on preparing our hearts for your second coming. Please fill the hearts of those who may not be prepared for your coming with the gift of saving faith in Jesus our Savior. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Indeed, we want all people to be ready and that God's word would continue to work in the lives of those who hear it, uh, to strengthen the faith of those who believe, and to establish faith in those who do not yet know Jesus. So today, as we look at our uh, final uh, Advent Bible study before uh, Christmas, uh, we're going to look at Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55, the Magnificat, Mary's uh, rejoicing that she uh, has been chosen to be the Savior, the, the mother, the mother of the Savior of the world. Uh, she needs a Savior as we all do, for she is a sinner like us. And so the theme today is for you to bear your flesh in weakness, for you to bear your flesh in in weakness. So our text today uh, begins Luke 1, 39 through 56. Uh, let's begin with the first portions of those uh, verses. Mary visits Elizabeth. Now Mary has uh, been told that she is uh, highly favored, uh, that God has chosen her to be uh, the mother of the Savior of the world. Um, she is overwhelmed by this. Uh, surprised by this, blessed by this. Um, what a special, special announcement to have uh, that will be conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit uh, so that uh, the one born would indeed be the Savior without sin, although Mary is herself a sinner. So Mary has this news, and she goes to greet Elizabeth. So in those days, Mary arose and went with haste, in a hurry into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud joy, a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Just before we even get uh, started with the text here, we just have to think about our own excitement uh, this time of year, our own joy this time of year, uh, to have Jesus come into this world to save all people. And even more so, we can think of the joy and understand uh, the joy that we've already heard from the shepherds and from the wise men and now to Mary and, and Elizabeth. I mean, this is real. You know, this is happening right there in their time in their lives. And uh, just how much, uh, you know, how special that is and who God is who, who makes all things possible. And so let's look at this a little bit. What does it, this say about the baby boy who would be born of Elizabeth? Remember, God has prophesied that one would come before the Savior to prepare the way 
And so what we have with Elizabeth, uh, when she heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And so this is going to be born John the Baptist. He is the one who prepares the way. He leaps for joy at the sound that the Savior uh, is going to be born. And Mary is going to be the mother. I would hope that would be the case for all people who hear that the, the Savior has come, that we would all leap for joy. We all have this excitement about how God loves us and how he has chosen to save us uh, despite our sin. Now, what does it say about unborn children in the womb in general? Well, it tells us that they are a, a living being, uh, that we know that they, there is a life uh, within that mother uh, that God has blessed, uh, husband and wife, and that uh, there, is, uh, there is no doubt in our minds that this life should be treasured and be special, not an inconvenience, not a burden, not a problem. Uh, it also reminds us as parents, and I'm blessed to have two children, how doctors will tell you to speak uh, when your child is in the womb, and, and they can uh, respond. There are, there are sensors and neurons and all these things that are going on, um, and that they can hear you. They can, under, they can make out noise that is going all uh, around uh, them. And so we have to remember that this is a life, and this all life is special, all life is sacred, from its very beginning to its very end, uh, because God is the one who brings all life forward, uh, forward, and therefore all life is sacred, and all life needs to be held in that esteem by those with whom he has given life. And you think about that, and we often, uh, people will talk about, well, again, this life is inconvenience. Uh, this life is not important. This life is not necessary. But as soon as you would say that about them, I'm sure they would say, wait a second. My life is important. I'm not an inconvenience. I'm not a burden. Well, we have to be careful what we say, right? And we have to treasure all life. Uh, we have the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. You shall not take any life. Let God be the one who brings in life and the one who determines its end. And when we do that, we're trusting God, right? We're celebrating life and rejoicing in it. And here, we just have this wonderful picture of a baby leaping in the womb, John the Baptist hearing uh, this greeting that Mary has come and that she is the one uh, whom is blessed to be the Savior of the world. Uh, not to be the Savior of the world, to be the mother of the Savior of the world. We have to remember that. Mary's not the Savior, only Jesus is, only Jesus is. Uh, without sin. But Mary is called blessed. Uh, what makes her so, and what does this greeting mean to Mary? So we have here that Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, and the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, very important there, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, no one can believe, no one can know the Lord without uh, the Holy Spirit. So filled with the Holy Spirit is Elizabeth making this um, confession, this, this proclamation. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Okay, so we talk about Mary being blessed in two ways. One certainly more important than the other. Uh, the one is just to be chosen. To be chosen by God for this amazing, um, this amazing blessing. Uh, to be the one for whom uh, the Savior would come that God would work uh, through you for this to take place. Being chosen is pretty special. And we can think about those who've been chosen in, in the past in, in the Bible. I mean, they, they, on the one hand, sometimes are pretty timid about being chosen. Why did you choose me? Uh, you know, I'm too young. I can't do this. Uh, maybe like the prophet uh, Jeremiah. And then we have some who seize the opportunity right away. Abraham being chosen seemed to seize that opportunity you know, left and follow God wherever he would lead them. But being chosen by God is special. God is working his plan out through you. Uh, you are a part of his narrative. And so we have to remember that, that just as God chose the people in the Bible uh, to fulfill his promises, to do what he wanted according to his will, God is doing the same for you and me. 
uh, in our lives. God has chosen us uh, to serve him and, and to share uh, the message of the gospel. So Mary is blessed on, on two reasons. Again, one, that she has been chosen to be the mother of Jesus, and two, uh, because uh, of what is in her womb. That is what's most important of all. It's the one within her womb. For if the Savior's not born, whether of Mary or someone else, the Savior not only not born, but doesn't suffer and die to take away the sins of the world, Mary remains in her sin. Elizabeth remains in her sin. You and I remain in our sin. But because God so loved the world, and this last candle that we think about for Advent is also called, often called the candle of love, God is showing his love for us, sending his son uh, Jesus to be uh, here for us. So this greeting uh, is special. She's blessed because she's the mother of Jesus, and she's blessed because Jesus is Jesus. Uh, and we all are blessed because he has come to save all of this all the people. So what does this mean to Mary? Um, she's just heard that she's going to be the mother of uh, Jesus. Uh, she runs, right, quickly to see Elizabeth. And now Elizabeth echoes uh, the angel, saying that you are uh, the mother of Jesus. And it's you, the, you know, a mother of my Lord. How wonderful that is, is that. Uh, the baby uh, leaped in my womb for joy. Um, and so this is important, fulfillment of God's word. And so we can find that Mary is, is more uh, at, at ease and at, at, at calm uh, for what she has heard. This is an affirmation about this. Uh, if somebody were to say to you that you're going to get this job, and you're not quite sure, is that true? Is that not going to happen? And then somebody affirms that to you, you would be more uh, inclined to say this is going to happen. And so for Elizabeth to echo this by the Holy Spirit is just affirming Mary. And this should help Mary just, you know, be filled with incredible humility, uh, incredible joy, and uh, a huge responsibility as well. We don't want to forget that. Uh, she is the mother of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Um, and so that's something to take to heart as well. This young woman, remember, young woman, a betrothed, uh, going through all of this situation in which she might be saying, you know, am I even uh, supposed to happen, have this happen? What am I going to say uh, to those who may look upon me and say that, uh, you know, I'm not even with child? So this is uh, going to be maybe a challenge for her. But this affirmation helps her to understand and to rejoice in this blessing. All right, let's continue on with uh, Mary here, the Magnificat uh, for us. How does Mary refer to God and his salvation in her song of praise? So now Mary has heard uh, from Elizabeth this affirmation of, of who she is and what who is in her womb, uh, filled with joy once again in what's going to take place. And now she responds with a song of praise, the Magnificat, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. Now let's took a, t a look at these verses and talk about where uh, and how she refers to God and his salvation. Uh, we also talk about, right away, uh, God my Savior. So she is very understanding that she needs forgiveness. She needs a Savior to rescue her from sin and death and the power of the devil. Uh, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, for behold... From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he was mighty. Can I refer to God as mighty? I mean, who else can do this but God alone to bring forth his son into this world, uh, to be born under the law, uh, to be born uh, without sin? Only God can, can cause this to take place. And finally at the bottom, and holy is his name. You know, God is unparalleled. Uh, for who he is. So Mary is, is really in a, in a wonderful source of praise uh, to God, uh, he, uh, God my Savior, and that he is mighty and that he is holy. But she doesn't stop there, uh, nor should she. There's so much more to say about God 
and what he is doing here for her and for the world. Now, let's continue also thinking about how we would praise God, how we do that today. Uh, praise God for his mercy endures forever, right? And his mercy is for those who fear him, uh, understanding that they, no one deserves Jesus to come into this world. No one. And, you know, we are sinners, and we deserve God's wrath and punishment. But God is merciful and shows mercy to Mary and, and for all people. He has some strength with his arm. Once again, his mighty hand scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You know, God could have chosen someone of, of high stature within the world uh, for which his son would be born, but not so. Uh, scattered the proud in their thoughts. Uh, in their hearts, and now he is going to one, choosing one, who is indeed a humble servant. Brought down the mighty from their thrones, God's continued uh, victory over his enemies, the enemies of Israel, the enemies of the devil, the world, the sinful nature, how he raises up his people, like you and me, uh, to know that we are loved and blessed. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. Now we talk about blessed are the poor in spirit, right? For theirs is the kingdom of God. We are, we are hungry for the message of forgiveness and salvation. God fills us with this message in Jesus. Uh, those who are rich he has sent away. Um, those who do not uh, believe they need God. Um, those who are so focused on themselves, the things of this world. But God has looked down upon Mary, upon the world that is struggling with sin, and he is raising us up uh, through his son Jesus, providing his mercy uh, that we need. So again, as we think about this uh, song of praise for Mary, we might think about our own lives. What would it include? What would we say uh, about or concerning Jesus? As our Savior. I think uh, mercy is a really good way uh, to look at it. In our next page here, um, she continues in her song of praise as she finishes up here. He has helped his servant. So help works out well. This is the kind of God we have. Merciful, a helper. Remembrance of his mercy once again is a highlight. I think that always should be a highlight for our lives as well. And the end here, uh, to Abraham and to his offspring, uh, that God is faithful to his promise. This is what this is all about, right? Faithful to his promise. God promised that a Savior would come. And now he has delivered on this Savior into this world for you and me. And so we can say... God keeps his word, not only sending Jesus, but also fulfilling in him what needed to take place so that we could be saved, suffer, die, and rise again. So this, this song of praise for Mary is a song of praise for Jesus coming into the world. The song of praise continues today uh, through Jesus' resurrection victory as we sing, This is the Feast of Victory. Uh, Jesus Christ was slain and now has been raised. And so you and I, uh, like Mary, should always have a song of praise uh, in our hearts and upon our lips. On my way to work today, I was listening to uh, the Christmas uh, music, the Christmas station here in Appleton. And, you know, you hear all the joy in those songs about silver bells, about reindeer, about good old Saint Nick. All of these things, these worldly things, at which people consume themselves in this time of year, all the while missing out on the reason, the reason we have real joy. And our reason for our joy is the love that came down at Christmas, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we should praise him. We should sing out as Mary did and talk about how we are blessed. Uh, that God has looked upon us through Jesus, and he has saved us from sin, death, everlasting condemnation. 
Well, I pray that you will, you know, continue to uh, rejoice in this time of the year of Advent, the season of preparation, uh, to look forward to the immediacy now, uh, that is Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, whenever you choose to worship the Lord. And have that same song uh, for your Christmas celebration that Mary did, and how blessed we are that Jesus has come and is our Savior and Lord. God bless your day. Thanks for, again, tuning in for Bible study with me.